get to do those little ordinary things. Paper! Miles and miles and miles of paper, sheaves and reams and tassels and stacks. Is this what I went to college for? Is this why I learned sonnet form? Shakespeare and Petrarchan, thank you very much. <laughs> and became gifted and proficient and wise beyond my years and studied Latin and Latin Greek and memorized the lymphatic system and kingdom, phylum, order, class, family, genius, species, KPC, oh, for goodness sake, and honed my weight and read Edmund Burke and translated Sententiae from Catullus and studied Titian and Caravaggio and Da Vinci and the lesson of food. Or flout and abided by men's sauna corpe sauna, even when it would have been just as nice not to wash or to entertain an impure thought. Just to be inundated and embargoed and generally assaulted by paper. Paper! Pillars and columns and towers of paper. It's not that messy, Ginger. <laughs> oh, Mr. John Pace Sebering. Have you found the tickets yet? Found the tickets. Found the tickets. We're searching for a proverbial needle in a real haystack. Oh, this is the way a new office is supposed to look. If your mother could see what this place is. If my mother could see what this place is. Why is the needle proverbial in the haystack real? <laughs> Are you trying to sidetrack me into literature? No, I'm just picking up on your own figure. No, Mr. Sebring, I am sorry, but I cannot search and lecture at one and the same time. For you to understand my figure, as you so pedantically call it, you would have to undertake a course of Asiatic studies. Last requirement! Where does one put theater tickets? That depends. What's the play? Faintly, my heart. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's an enormous hit. And we all know what hit rhymes with, don't we? <laughs> now, everyone I spoke to. Oh, they're wrong! It's utterly predictable. Predictable, predictable, predictable. You know what is going to happen from the second the May enters with the bowl of roses. Now, tickets are impossible to come by. When did you even see it? See it? I have no interest in seeing it. Seeing it might get in the way of my opinion. <laughs> oh, kid, sir. How did the art survive with you watching them? <laughs> by which time, I'm of course. Have you read what I gave you? What you gave me? Yes. What I gave you. Well, I have been. Yes, I see. Well, I gave it a glance, of course. A glance? Not so much of a glance, really, I peered at it. <laughs> and what did you think? Well, I liked it very much. Which did you prefer? I liked them very much. <laughs> the free verse or the sonnet? Well, naturally, I prefer free verse these It was prose. They were. It was. It was a single piece of flowering prose, of which your total ignorance does not prevent you from forming an opinion of two poems. How did the art survive with you peering at them? <laughs> so sorry, Gish. I, I've been awfully busy these days. Hang out your single in this publishing game, and well, look what happens. What is this farce we are playing? Beg your pardon. What am I to you, Mr. Seaver? My employee. And what does that mean exactly? I tremble in your presence. As well you should. Yes. As well you should. Oh, come on, old man. He's up a bit. I am your employee in a business that does not exist. Now, how can you say it doesn't exist? Look around you, what do you see? Paper! That's the realest thing there is. What have you published? Oh, it's No, 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 tell me. Recite your list. My list is blank. My list is blank. <laughs> Title for your memoirs, perhaps. <laughs> it's where everyone starts somewhere. I'm the flunky of a man with a messy office. That is me and Toto. Get her. You're not personal with me. You're not professional with me. We are nothing to each other. No, I hold you in very high esteem, Gidger. Is Gidger my first name or my last? <coughs> Pardon? I said, is Gidger my first name or my last? Well, it never occurred to me it was either. <laughs> it never occurred to me it was your name at all. I thought it was just sort of what we called you. <laughs> sort of the new of the name. How are you? I beg you, I said. said. How are you? You mean physically? Yes, all right, yes. Because of my mental state, I'm giving you a fair account so far. Well, then yes, how are you physically? Not bad, are you? <laughs> Quite well, thank you. How's your dog? Despicable. Is he? Yes. That sweet thing. 
Blow a irredeemable creature. I'm sure not. Don't contradict me. I wouldn't. He is utterly lacking in the quality of empathy. No. Every <laughs> night is the same thing. I return home to my garret after my day this, and I ask him, <laughs> dutifully, would you like to be walked? And invariably, he replies, yes, I would very much like to be walked. Never once has he inquired as to whether I really feel like walking it. Never once has he picked up on my mood. Would you like to be walked? Yes, I'd very much like to be walked. Garish mandibles, dripping leash tail, swishing like a bobbin, like a shuttle pack, along a sock machine in perpetual motion. Would you like to be walked? Yes, I'd very much like to be walked. Would you like to be fed? Yes, I'd very much like to be fed. Well, maybe I don't feel like it. Maybe I need a drink and a foot rub. No, no, would you like to be walked? Yes, I'd very much like to be walked. Would you like to be fed? Yes, I'd very much like to be fed. A dog's life. You want to know who leads a dog's life? A dog's master. I'm going to have him killed. You're <laughs> not. I am seriously considering. <laughs> you wouldn't kill, uh. What's his name? Sir Lancelot. Ah. <laughs> sometimes I call him Lance, and sometimes I call him Sir. Sometimes I call him Lancey, and sometimes I call him Lot. Sometimes I call him Stella, and sometimes I call him Slut. <laughs> sometimes I call him Lut. Sometimes I call it Sa. With each new name, I hope to call forth some admirable and as yet undiscovered aspect of his personality. <laughs> You're not going to kill your puppy. Can't I even kill my dog? No! What do I have? I live in Queens. We need to find those tickets. Choke on them. Slow pace. I'm early. All right, Daddy, what are you do? Oh, uh, I don't know. Hours from now, I couldn't wait. Mr. Dennis, one N, the Irish McCleary, is here to see you, Mr. Sebring. You burst in unannounced, rash like the rest of his tribe, hours in advance of his appointment, just in case you actually believe this was a real office. <laughs> <laughs> that was highly strung. What are y'all dithering about? Oh, uh, I'm looking for something. You don't mind that I'm here? No, oh, no. Look around you, we don't stand on ceremony. Sit, sit. On these theater tickets. Oh. What's the play? Oh. I told it first rate. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not. The American theater will never achieve anything like European maturity. It's allowed to my attention to play. Oh, God, is that imminent? Why are you wasting your time on theater? It's not such a peculiar thing to do. All sorts of people go to the theater. These tickets were very hard to come by. Not all sorts of people that go to the theater. It's one sort. One sort who like to consort with their sorts. Oh, God, Demi. <laughs> <laughs> it's nauseous. The really big problem on Broadway today is you always know what's going to happen. Why bother paying attention to something when you can tell how it's going to end? In my work, the reader will never know where the story is headed. Why give him that advantage over the author? What? What do you think of this place? Hovel. It's a wee bit messy. What are all these pages everywhere? Well, it's the funniest thing, Daddy. I, I call myself a publisher, and people actually believe me. They actually send me things. Other people do? Yes. Uh, unsolicited things. You know, nothing to. Aren't you supposed to be at work? <laughs> work? Well, these are working hours, aren't they? I don't know. I, I suppose. Danny, the thing about being one rung above ruin is it's not much better than ruin you have. In fact, it's a little worse because you always have the specter of ruin hovering about everywhere. Danny, you can't quit your job. Actually, I can. Not again. In life, at pace, you either have to soar or plummet. It's the vast in between that destroys the soul. Excuse me. May I interrupt, or are you too busy exchanging essays and aphorisms? Speak, <laughs> This machine is coming. What machine? A machine. Did we order a machine? Oh, are we we? All of a sudden, have I executive authority? Can I dismiss people? <laughs> what sort of machine is it? Indecipherable. Is it large? I should say so. Large. What does it do? Something? Make toast or something? Well, I don't know. Why not? Let's test it out. Maybe some slices of bread on you? Could it be a telegraph machine? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to take a look? A little later, Mitch. I'm, I'm dealing with something here. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> what could it be? Oh, no, 
Coast. These merchants, they sell you things you listen with one ear in. Denny, you have to get your job back. I, I can't. Okay. Why not? I said some things. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Denny, Denny. Oh, yes, I do. I think, I think I said them to make going back impossible. You idiots. You have to do that sometimes. You have to make things irreversible so as not to be stuck in reverse. It wasn't such a bad job. You didn't do it. No, oh, I did it. It's very wrong of you, Pace, to tell me what I must do and need to do in your life is devoid of musts and of means. I worry about you. But you want, sh shouldn't worry about my leaving that job. You should worry about my staying there. Oh, everybody has jobs like that at the start. You're young. I'm ancient. I want them to oxidize. <laughs> <laughs> I was writing slogans. For dry cleaners. My talent was losing away by the hour pace. It's only the 1st of April, 1919. The world's the oldest it's ever been, and I'm nothing. What will you do? Hmm? What will happen to you? You tell me. What will? Ah. Have you at least read it? Yes. Yes, I have. Well, silence is so immensely cruel. What did you think? Well, I... Torpid, senile, 25-year-old wretch! Speak! <coughs> well, I liked this section very much. Yes! Now, around here, the story grew quite vague. Oh, I quite agree! Now, this one... Don't you think that? Oh, absolutely! Yes. But all in all, I, I mean, there's also. Will you publish it? There's also some pretty rough stuff in here. For instance, that section of what you call Altered the Matrix Dentata and Maternal. Oh, I wasn't uh, sure which was the correct Latin. Latin has nothing to do with it. It's the context that I'm worried about. We live in a hopelessly effeminate culture base until we overthrow the mother and reinstate the father. Western civilization will not advance one whit. Yes, well, everyone accepts that. But still, this grotesque image of teeth coming out of the mother's womb. That is a literal portrait of my mother in Indiana, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, it isn't. Have you met her? Either way, you get us thrown in jail. We then get that it's ten pages out of two million. Which brings us back to the first problem. Does it excite you? Yes. Well, then? Then you can't even call a book. It's more sort of an anthology. My aims aren't narrow. Aim has nothing to do with it. You don't aim at all. You're more sort of straight. I believe in the novel of inclusion. Huh. In the argument between James and Wells, I'm a decided Wells here. You're more McCleary than either, and that's not even got a finished thing. This isn't a novel, Denny. It's, it's, it's a grouping of pages, not even a pile. You need one of those vivid words they use for birds or cats. A gamble. A murder. A catastrophe of pages. Not a single thing at all, but this vast, unorganized, untitled. It has a title. Oh, it does? Yes! As of a few days ago. Twilight, a few days ago. Twilight, a few days ago. Yes. And what would that title be? The Violet Owl. The Violet Owl. Yes. A little swish? No. No. No, I like it. It's that time, that wonderful New York hour when the evening's about to reward you for the day. Yes. And that light. That quiet light you can walk between and hasten to places. Yes. It's nice. Will you publish it? It's, steady. it's about 25 books. Oh, it has a title. Once something has a title, it's single. That's nuts. That's a basic taxonomic principle. Do you have any real information? Is everything you don't made up? Why won't you publish it? I haven't said I won't. I just I don't think I can, economically. Why is it always the rich who never mind no, other things? No, I'll tell you why. It's because the poor are always seeking opportunities. Well, all the rich want are limitations. You're terrified by the vastness of what's available to you, so you devote yourself to these fictional constraints which being unreal are insuperable, and who suffers for it? Hmm? I do. Dennis. I'm just starting out here. If I publish your book, I can lose my shirt. But then you'll have your sweater, and your coat, and all of your other shirts! <laughs> the money isn't mine. The money is not yet mine. It hasn't come down to me. A pittance has, and that's all. I'm just starting out here. I, I may not 
have the capacity to publish more than one book. I'm telling you, it is one book. That's not what I meant. Then what did you... No. There is another book I mean. There is another book under consideration. Another book? How can there be another book? Mine is the only book necessary. Daddy. Mine is a last text. It's like leaves of grass. After reading my book, people won't need to read anymore. They'll live. It's my impression that people continue to read even after leaves of grass. Don't give the failures of Walt Whitman on me, John. <laughs> Yes, the 
Pierre. It was on the gazillion floor. Oh, the Pierre Yes, the Pierre There were so many rooms. She led me through so many rooms. There were all these rooms, all these rooms to her room. Like a trail, a famous trail. I thought there must be a map. This is one of those inevitable wounds that pioneers discover. You're overriding again. I couldn't believe it was happening. With this kind of girl, I didn't know what was what. I forgot everything I'd ever known. It was as if I weren't myself. As if I'd become the girl. Oh, Christ, Debbie. And then it happened, and I felt married to her. And then? Then? Yes. There was no then, John. There was, Debbie. I know there was, because you're here right now. I'm not sure what you're asking for. The minute everything turned rotten and your prose improved. I don't want to go into that. But do. We'd fallen asleep. When I woke up, she was gone. It was as if... Hold off on the similes for a moment. My body ached. There was a sewer taste in my mouth, and I was ravenous. The whole world seemed... So you got dressed? Yes. And made my way onto the street. It had rained, and the rain had given way to a milky kind of sun. The day was humid, and I could smell myself something rank. I walked until I found an automat, where with the last few pennies I had for two days, I bought myself a sandwich. I sat down, and within the hands, a bum sat across from me. Truly, all of life. Any particular to... kind of bum. All bums are the same, John. Not really. We had two teeth, one perfect and one smattered. Well, there. And he ate a soup made of hot water and mustard. And I gobbled my sandwich down and bared my teeth at him so that he could see I was eating meat. And then? And then he asked if I'd like a little of his soup. And you fled. And I fled. And you thought. And I thought, this is what's waiting. The rest is unreal. And then? And then I saw it in rain again. And the rain had cooled the air and puddled the street with these tiny skittish oil paintings. And I thought yes, and I thought no. And I thought yes, Rosamund had happened. And then clerks and secretaries started emerging from office buildings and scurrying every which way, and the daylight dimmed, and neon lights switched on, and people's reflections dappled in store windows, and I thought this is the violent hour. And I thought, that's my time. And for the first time that day, I was altogether present. I would have to walk home across the Greensboro Bridge, but I didn't despair as I usually did. Because I knew. I knew I would only be crossing that bridge a few more times. And suddenly, I was inside my horrible little apartment, and I stripped naked and got into bed and melted to sleep and slept 17 hours. And the next day I arrived at work four hours late and showered my boss with obscenities. <laughs> so don't you see, you have to publish me or my happiness is ended. Well, I don't see that at all. If she loves you. John, you invented the world. Why don't you know how it works? If she loves you, there's a father. Fellow in the Midwest. Uh, Arrangements have been made before I ever came onto the scene. A, a fellow named Armitage of the breweries. Yes, there's some hope of consolidating the family interests. Stay and ill, oh my word. <laughs> yes, and the whole gizmo's already started up. So I have to bring at least a promise of something or doom. Yes, I see. Well, I love the book, of course. Yes, I love it. Them, it, oh, pays. It would be a gigantic task, of course, bringing it into life. Then you're going to. I didn't say that. But you're inclined. I'm inclined. Wait till you meet her. Who? Rosamund. When? In just a few minutes. What? She's coming here. Why? To clinch it. Then I still need more time. I still need something to deal with. I adore you. Miss Early? Uh, uh. The fellow in the other room. Who does the Uh, no, no. Yeah, he was no. talking to I think you're absolutely right. You can just call me if you're ready. That's Ethiopian apparition. Hush. She was colored, right? Can you please lower your voice? It's Jessie Brewster. Jessie Brewster? She's the colored singer, right? The one with the strange style, the one who you Yes. 
Who the hell do you know her from? She has this painting, and I'm thinking of buying it. Is it of natives with enormous genitals? <laughs> no. You knowing Jesse Brewster, aren't you the man about town? Or should I say the man about town? Oh, I'm just in a good mood. Listen, I haven't promised you anything. But you will. I need a day to think on it. I'll give you ten minutes. You have to understand I'm implacable. <laughs> Dennis! <laughs> Wait till you meet her empire's topple, you'll be a breeze. The machine is spewing paper, and Miss Jesse Brewster the tawny nightingale. Yes, See? yes, yes. I'll go. <coughs> What's on the paper? Is Mr. McCleary addressing me? <laughs> uh, yes, I believe he is, Kinter. <laughs> is that permitted? <laughs> uh, yes, I believe it is, Kinter. Writing of some sort. Is it English writing? Print or cursive? Uh, Calligraphy? Runes? I haven't investigated. Why not? I'm a little Dutch boy. I'm stemming a flood. <laughs> <laughs> Send in Miss Brewster. Will you get her? Well, why not? I'll be right back. Oh, all right. right. Till you meet her, you'll love her, you'll love us. We'll inspire you. Miss Jessie Brewster, Raven Skin Songstress. Miss Brewster. Mr. John K. Seaburn. Have a seat, won't you? Yes, thank you. Gitter! Yes? Has Mr. McCleary gone yet? Yes! Thank you. Well. Gitter! Yes? Would you like to take a little break now? Uh, maybe later. <laughs> well. Well, I read your book with great interest. I was hoping you had. Great interest in and what did you think of it? I liked it very much. I'm glad. And you swear by it. You worked without a ghost. Every word is my own. It's very rare with this kind of thing, you know, very rare. I didn't know. Oh, yes. <laughs> the thing about it is, it, it, it's so very articulate. Mm -hmm. By which I mean, of course, uh, other performers when they write their books. Or rather, when their books are written for them, they tend to bloviate. They. Gaps. Ah, uh, ah, uh, face. <coughs> Flowers, the real purple, you know. <coughs> but your writing is quite wonderfully pure. Well, that's because I tell the truth. And the truth always purified the ghost out. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Seabury? Please, call me John. John. And you must call me Jesse. Jesse. Now, I don't know if I quite agree. Well, you should consider doing so. Because I am right. I see a style of all frills and purplos. I know I'm being lied to. And the truth is being concealed. Give me a march of simple declarative sentences and no lies possible. There's nowhere to hide. Don't show me a cause unless the truth is complicated. And the truth rarely ever is. Oh, Shakespeare. That was a terrible liar. He was. Well, he couldn't help it. You see, he lived in a time of fortress. Lying was the world and what made him He was no exception. Most would say he was the exception. There are no exceptions sometimes. You're a very grand thinker. I'm a very plain thinker. Or else how would I know what I know? There has been a temporary cessation in the machine activities. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's all this? From the machine. From the machine? From the machine. <laughs> oh my god. What shall I do with it? Put it down somewhere. Anywhere? Yes, anywhere. Oh, but no. I would hate to send your office into disarray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't forgive myself if I brought disorder to your sanctum mesora. That's fine, Gitter. <laughs> I'll be taking that break now. Very good. <laughs> A strange machine has arrived at your office unannounced. It has secret gears that grind hidden cards to turn a crew mechanical will. Aren't you even interested? Whatever it is, I'm sure I can handle it. <laughs> don't you ever, don't you even Why get her? Not get her. Is Gidger my first name or my last? Why not take that 
great. Why won't you acknowledge me? What poets do you like? Are you addressing me? <laughs> I prefer the strong rhythms of Gerald Manley Hopkins. Ah, yes, Hopkins. Reading him is always like walking barefoot on a New England beach. You are constantly being pricked by unexpected stones. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be taking that break now. Very good. Smelling marvelously 
like a department store. <laughs> That's you and the book. You are each other. There's no help again, I suppose. Well, why should there be? Why should there be? I don't know. Will you publish it? Well, part of me screams out, no, I don't want to publish it. I want to private it. I want to secret it beneath my pillow and have it for my dreams. That does me no good. It's your life, the book is. And it belongs to me now. Not to anyone who's coming forward or anyone who's coming after. Well, actually, it's mine. Well, Jesse, what you are to me. Well, I like you fine, too. You know, everything in my life has always been so sharp angle and obvious and safe. No, safe. I've been longing for something clandestine. Clandestine. And here we are with this secret thing, this big secret thing, and I'm so obscenely happy! You young men. I tell you, I'm not young. The men of your generation who are in the war. I'm ancient. I'm historical. I'm Moses. You all make sad and famous. Yet as a group, I must say, you are the most enthusiastic, Mama. I am. Do you hear me, John? What? I was questioning the gap between your reputation and your behavior. I'm sorry, Jesse. I wasn't really listening. I'm spinning on any lips. Well, I ask. Why are you recommending all so damn happy? Or is that too much to answer? No, I don't think it is. Then tell me. Well, I think it's because the century's still so young and all the worst things have already happened in it. Have they already happened? Oh, yes, of course. Nothing could be worse than the war. And those who come back, suffer full of damage, and you see them on the streets like memento mori that makes you stumble. But then you remember you survived. You've lost your youth, but you survived. And losing your youth, which feels at first like the loss of everything, only means that the world isn't the way you thought it was. But it is some other way. And wantable. And so we've started to want it again. And it's all hectic inside us because we never thought we would feel it again, this wanting. But it's there, and it's better than any happiness we knew before when life was innocent and uninteresting. And we're all fired up by it. And there's always this certainty under everything, under all the uncertainty, that it could never be that bad again, that we've been through the worst. And so if we're feeling lost and ecstatic, it's because we have lost so much and have everything to gain and will gain it. And those who aren't dead are young. <coughs> Jess, I feel so sure about things. About what things? I don't know, that's the odd part. I haven't a clue what will happen, but I know it will be right. Oh, you do? Somehow I do. You know, I have no talent of my own. No, no that's not. it's true, it's completely true. I have no creative talent of any kind. But I have a sense of who does this little bit of money, and I know, I know that it's all going to lead somewhere important. I have power. I have a sort of mission. I have this amazing sense of destiny, and I can't figure it out. I don't know what it will look like, but I know it's there for me. Is that pompous? Oh, my God. Well, I can't help it if it's true. Are you publishing my book? Must you know? Must you know right away? Yes. Why? Because, unlike the people you fought the war with, I am neither dead nor young. I, I and I haven't as much as you to go on as you do. Just and I want to fix myself in people's minds. Well, people know you. You're famous. To the 200 who know where I am. That's more than most get. That's not enough. Well, it should be. Not for me. If you would just wait. I've been waiting. And I've waited and I've waited and I've waited and I no longer know the reason for the delay. I only ask you to be a little patient. Patient. That is no kind of word to be using with me, John. Do you know how long I've been patient? I'm sorry, Jess. Oh, you're sorry. You're sorry. Is that what you are? Jess! You sit here in this haphazard room that looks like weather's happening to it, with no inkling of the future or an instinct of your name, except you know, you know, that whatever you do will turn out all right. But see, John, I am nearly 14 years older than you, and by myself I can only go so far. That is not as far as I need to go. So I need you. I need your help. Like a little baby. <laughs>
I'm not a baby. God, I can even smell it. Jess! It's not enough to be famous to a few dozen drunks in the evening clothes who condescend to worship me. No. I want my life known. I want to publish it. I want to nail it into people's heads. Jesus, Jess, that's a pretty gruesome way to put it. Don't take that tone. Don't pretend you do not want to be shocked by me. The thing is, you see, I only have very limited resources. I only have the capacity to publish one book. Lucky for you, I've only written one book. You have. <laughs> yes. Who is that young man? The, uh... The one who was with you earlier when I arrived. Oh, Denny. <coughs> That's Dennis McCleary. He's an old friend from school. Old friend? Are you sleeping with him? <laughs> God, no! Uh, you are sitting with me. Well, that should have answered your question. <laughs> you go too far sometimes, you know. Has he written a book? No, I wouldn't say so. Good. Because every word he writes would be a lie. You don't even know him. You don't have to make the points of that sort of person to know him. He's all right. That's a weak thing to say. Don't call me that. Tell me, John. Are you really a publisher? I am. I mean to be a publisher. Then publish something. It's so hard to decide. It's so hard to act. But the future is in your pocket. And I don't want to mess that up. I need a crystal ball. How else will I know? You can't. You can't know how anything will turn out. All you can do is what's right. How do I know what that is? Well, I know what's right. <coughs> you see, John, your college friends are all liars. Good liars, charlatans, no talent in drunks, and will have no trouble achieving publication. So I need you. I need just Oh, there is no time. There is no such thing as time. One day. Do you wish to be my lover, John? I am your lover. Do you wish to remain so? Of course. Ah. Is that contingent? No, no, of course not. Except, <laughs> with everything you do or fail to do, you reveal yourself to me. What I learn, I will assess. And once I know what manner of man you really are, <laughs> I will decide if you suit. You can't run out on me, Jess. You know I can't do without you. And I don't want to. I like most things about you. I like talking to you, and sleeping with you, and cradling your head, my child, my baby boy. <coughs> I even like being your secret, <coughs> having you for mine. But I won't be your lock. You're not. Yes. The tiny thing you brag to yourself about. The small violence that violates nothing. I'm not going to make any promises that I can't keep. But you make a promise every day. Good morning is a promise when you say it. Oh, I need just one Are day. Are you going to the theater tonight, John? Uh, yes. Yes, I found the tickets. Shall we meet for just four? Yes. I'll stop by here around set. That will be lovely. And then you'll tell me what you decided. I'm going out here for a day. You see? You see what's happening?
anything I can do? No. No need. Does life ever become transparent for you? Transparent? Do you ever have presentings? Are you ever certain what will happen next? No. Never. Well, I am sometimes. I am right now. Demi and I are the only happiness that will ever be possible to each other. Um, then take each other. It's not so easy. There's my father. Don't make a mistake about him. He's a very kind man and a very prudent one. All he asks is some evidence that something will become of Demi. Then he'll give us a place. And if there is no evidence right away, then you marry anyway? Then live poor. Oh, John. Well, if you love each other. Love then... doesn't necessarily abolish intelligence. Then he is a Catholic. The last Catholic. His faith is last. Sight for me is out. He's a great tough tormentor. If I were to give up everything, the burden would be intolerable. It would destroy us. And there is another man waiting in the wings who will not ever be poor. Things didn't work out for us, especially. Yes, I've heard of him. Oh, you have? Yes. Man Armitage. Yes, this man Armitage. And what kind of life would you have with him? Fine life. You love him? I used to think so. But ever since Denny came along? His concept has been redefined. And your feelings now for Armitage? They have not diminished. It's just they don't compare. Won't you publish this book? All I know is maybe.
What are the causes? Complicated. Complicated. Oh. Well, shall we exchange pages? No, not yet. All right. Why did this machine come to us? I don't know. Was it a prank? I thought so at first. I thought my father sent it to undo me. Your father? Yes. Why would your father want to undo you? Because I'm defying him. Because I'm taking only so much of his money and no more and using it to smash everything he believes in. Because he wants to control me and I won't let him. Because we're natural enemies. Oh. But isn't it our mothers we hate? Oh, only for a few more years. <laughs> and then it's our fathers. Yes. <laughs> what do you know? I... yes. Huh. Pickle. <coughs> I wish it hadn't come. Yes. I wish it had never come. Yes. I mean, it's compelling reading, but I'm not enjoying myself. Let's stop. All right. <laughs> I know, let's go somewhere. You and I, to a bar or somewhere where we can drink and spot philosophy and be terribly gay. Oh. <laughs> Why are you laughing? A word you use. What word? Gay. Not flummoxed. It doesn't mean what you think it does. I think it does. Oh, it means something else. <laughs> what? Oh, the late mid-century at the latest. What? Homosexual, chiefly male. Gay means homosexual, cheaply male? Yes. <laughs> What's the connection? Well, I don't know the etymology, just the outcome. But then what word means gay? As far as I can tell, there isn't one. But how can that be? As far as I can tell, it's no longer needed. Why? 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 Well, it seems that by centuries end, the prevailing note is a sort of dark general frivolity for which almost everyone has contempt, but that no one does anything to change. But gay has nothing to do with frivolity. Gay has the utmost existential seriousness. Existential. What made me say that? I don't know. Existential. I don't know what it means, but it sounds popular. <laughs> Is it Kierkegaard? I don't know. I've always meant to read Kierkegaard. <laughs> I've read Hegel. <laughs> I've even believed him. Oh, I have such terrible gaps. Gay be gone. How do they live without it? I don't know. To be gay is not to be frivolous. I know. To be gay is to be lighthearted in the face of every kind of darkness, to insist of one's own happiness when God or the force of chaos rally to oppose it. To fill a void, to make a void a niche, to understand that the future is at best bleakness deferred. And to go on. So those people no longer exist because those people have co-opted their names. Co-opted? It means to take over, I think. Take over? Appropriate? Uh, co-opted. Well, I don't care what those people think. I am gay. Gay, gay, gay! <laughs> there. You know what those people do? Uh, I've never been sure. Well, imagine a thermometer. No, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, John? 
Why are you talking like that? Um, like what? Your voice has stopped spiking. Has it? Yes. Has it? Yes. <laughs> My voice has stopped spiking. My voice has stopped. Well, uh, what's the point of being original if you're just going to die in complete obscurity? Huh. I just read a conversation I had yesterday. With whom? Bartley. Had he died of syphilis yet? <laughs> no. Well, he will. <laughs> it wasn't much of a conversation, but he transcribed every word. Why did he take it all down? Why are we all such recordists? Don't we know that everyone's taking everything down as if it's historic? As if it's historical? As if it's witty or sums up the times? I've read things I said three weeks ago, and things I said three years ago, and things that were said back to me, and things I said but not quite so well, and things that were said back but not quite that way. Gidger, we all sound alike. I thought we were each unique. I thought our nuances were essential. When I read them, I can't hear them anymore. We all sound the same. We all sound like the past. Even you, Gidger. Even back when you were the opposite of everything, you were just a, a different tempo and the same signature. I don't want to think about it. On the street, there's a woman standing in front of the shop window. Her chin is propped up on her finger. She's trying to decide whether or not to buy a dress. She doesn't see this, but across the street from her, a man is taking her photograph. I know what the photograph will look like. All gray with bunches of light behind it. That ghostly look. This all happened ages ago. Look at us, Skidger. We're period. These aren't clothes we're wearing, they're costumes. Yes, yes it is. Well, she hasn't. Well, I'm very grateful for you. Yes, thank you. The concierge at Miss Clint's building. She hasn't come in, but he heard the note of concern in my voice. And decided to call anyway. People were so considerate back when we lived. Oh, I found something about you. Oh? In a book about something else. When was it written? 1959. What's it say? Until his recent retirement represented the beau ideal in American publishing. Oh. His example reminds us that the root meaning of virtue is manliness. You are well liked in 1959. Oh, that's 1959. Did she jump? Well, I don't know. I haven't yet read that. Well, it doesn't matter. Get her. I only mean whatever will be, will be. Hey, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Hey, Sarah, Sarah, what will be, will be. I'll get that. Miss Jessie Brewster, Honey Nightingale. Yes, Gidger. What do you know? Uh, Gidger, Miss Brewster and I need to speak. Oh, you mean alone? <laughs> yes. Fine, I'll find something to read. John, what's... What he's learned? He must have sounded insane to you on the phone. No. How could I not? Anything that causes dread makes sense to me. What's found out? We are. How? By whom? Annabelle Darlington. And who is Annabelle Darlington? Some sort of writer. How did she find out about us? We leave traces. And this book is published? Yes. When? 1992. Yeah. <laughs> then we all die. I haven't read those pages yet. Well, of course we have. We must have. Certainly you. <laughs> Unless extraordinary things have happened. Extraordinary things do happen. What sort of things have you read? What traces do we leave? I only have sections, pages, 
from spewing out, I try to order them. There are letters. Apparently, we saved each other's letters. Show me. My Shiva. I'm supposed to be working. Instead, I think of you. How I love to grab you by your palm arms and draw you into me. With your breath, stirring me with its red ones of black ice in the sea. The black, the calmly cheek pressed to mine. You never wrote this. I never got this from you. I was going to send it. I meant to send it. Ugh, it sounds excruciating. Is it as foolish as I think it is? Here it is. But somehow, it's not here. It's the most confounding thing. Here I thought I was an intelligent man. It seems I'm wrong. You are an intelligent man. Not just about that, about everything. What does this book say? Here. Maybe you can explain it to me. This part. Her characteristic sound, for which she became famous, is something that voice teachers call la voce di strega, the voice of the witch. It's a kind of trill in which a cultivated head tone alternates rapidly with a raw, booming hollow note from the chest. In this bifurcated sound of Jessie Brewster slyly encoded the rending divisions between her African roots and European aspirations. Is that why you make that noise? I just thought it sounded interesting. Here, this is us. But this was no meeting of innocent souls, for underlying and deep pervading this relationship were overlapping and concurrent scripts of whiteness and negritude. Maleness and femaleness, overclass and underclass, Master and slave, mother and child, all performed within a framework of the self-consciously illicit, inflected on both sides by a fetishizing of the primitive and marked by strong homosexual role play. It seems to be written in patois. Oh my god! We are never again eating red meat. <laughs> Chapter one. Don't read it. But what's the point? We know everything that's in it. Or we will. Seems as if I don't know any of it. It's all so strange. Here I am on the brink of everything, and it feels like an ending. Ever since it started, I felt sick for some reason. I felt ashamed. Nothing connects to anything. Could this have been my life? No. But all these words, they're Stop reading them. How can I stop reading them when they're there? Stop caring. But I do care. Terribly. Then act like someone who doesn't. You can't do that, Jessie. You can't make yourself into someone you're not. That is the only truly stupid thing I've ever heard you say. Why didn't you tell me? Ginter, we... How did you keep it from me? What? Ginter, what are you talking about? You tore a sedgenade. Where? Did Under you... my very eyes. How did you... Did you think I would judge you? Do you really think that little of me? How did you find that out, Ginter? This is so bogus. You tune into one dick day open, bro. Treat me like I'm a day player and you're the whole miniseries. All day long, this machine be bugging, but I'm all the way to Adelaide. I can look right here. Dude works for you 24 7, you gotta give him props. Another book. Another, another book? Yes. What is the other book? John K. Seabury, alike. How famous am I? Probably not very. I don't know. I only found one chapter in the index. But I'm the title. And I'm not listed in the index. Well, I'm sorry, Gidger. I quit. No, Gidger. I'm going to work for a book that lists me. You can't. <laughs> And why is that coffee-colored, Carolyn? <laughs> because I don't want you telling people about us. That's what you're afraid of. You're afraid of that. Well, let me tell you something. I'm offended. By the end of the century, being offended will be the noblest thing a person can aspire to. I am high here at being offended. I'm in the avant-garde of taking umbrage. <laughs> Do you really think just because I have no history, I have no character? I'm the most loyal cipher who has ever lived, if I have ever lived, which apparently I have not. 
Then help me burn this office down. Jess! Help me make a fire fire. John? Help me incinerate these papers. Jesse, they're both. The cult races are attracted to fire, John. What good will it do? We can stop the both. I've heard whole cities walk away with TV sets. Shut up, kids. I read it in the book. Cheek 
with her knife 17 stitches were sewn, the scar will be ugly. Eventually, I quieted her. I had to indecipherable, I'm afraid, and called an ambulance, which cost $25. Rosemont's back at the hospital now. I returned home just a few minutes ago, nursing my outraged cheek for which the painkillers I've been prescribed are doing very little. The three fingers of Jim seem to be having a salutary effect. At least, I can't... But John, this is what I really meant to be writing you about. I was wondering, as sort of a tie-over while I'm working on the new novel, if you'd consider putting out an edition of some earlier stuff. The Violet Hour might be able to draw some attention as a period piece. There's tremendous interest in that era now, and I really believe that if people were reminded of how good I used to be, they perceive me better now, which honestly means as much to me as any revenue the books might produce, as I have no interest in posthumous acclaim. The job that I hate is her laugh. When we're together, she launches it at me at a pretty much hourly basis. Become a kind of cold. What it says is, you are no kind of man. My unhappiness is infinite. My hatred for you is indecipherable. May you fry in it. She laughs and looks at me with that haze, which when we were young was all freshness and candor, and now is pure punishment. In the old days, when she felt this madness, Coming on, she'd secretly rent a hotel room to hide away in until she'd squelch herself and was fit to return to people. <coughs> Maybe if our money hadn't cash and her family hadn't lost everything in the crash, things would be all right. Maybe the only thing separating us from the price of contentment is a hope. Help. John, I wish I didn't feel this. Guilt. Stop! That day, in April, when Rosemond and I thought we were going to die together, you suddenly reversed yourself. It was a kind of miracle. You said, yes, you published The Violent Hour, and our happiness was complete. That book was the making of a spoke case, and it's all gone well for you, and I'm glad for that. But I wish you never published it. I wish it never happened at all. Yes, to the plaza. Yes, to the plaza. 
bodily functions. Bodily functions? <laughs> Don't make that noise. What I, what I meant was... Quite all right. Yes. Do you need a bromide? Shall I go fetch one for you? No, thank you. Something seems to see. Anyway, they're terribly nice at the plaza, and it's the loveliest place. I always go there when I want to daydream. Daydream? Yes. That's what I call it. Do you daydream often? Oh, every once in a while. Every now and again, I just go all private with myself. See, the good thing about hotels is it's not where you live, so when you daydream, there's no danger of mistaking it for real life. Do you see? I highly recommend it. It's how I kept my wits about me. And did you go there to daydream this afternoon? Well, I suppose I did. But here's the funny thing. First I've gone to my place, my place, the apartments, you know, and all the sweet men at the concierge desk breathe this absolute sigh of relief because you flustered them so. I didn't mean to. Well, that's all right. It's just fine. It's sweet and concerned, really. So I went up to my rooms, and they, well, the rooms, well, I felt this daydream coming up. So I just hide myself up to the plaza where, as you know, I'd already rented a suite. And they were all flustered about me, too. Really, it was as if all the young men in Manhattan were chorus line running over me. Like this jazz chorus seeing my name in a nervous kind of music. Nice, really. Anyway, I was turning from this particular branch of the chorus, and who should I see? Who? My father. Your father. Can you imagine? My He'd come to town without telling me, bad man, and here we were together by sheer coincidence. Well, there's nothing less dreamy than a Chicago meatpacker, so that was that for my daydreaming. Can you stop them once they've started? The... The daydreams. Can you stop them? Oh. Yes, of course. But, you see, uh, we went out to tea. Palm court. Thought about your idea. Right. About your suggestion. About offending all our plans and waiting just a year. A year? Yes, a year. I thought it was providential, you see, his being here for one purpose and my being here for quite another purpose. And you having made the suggestion, I thought it all formed a triangle, a providential triangle, so I was very endearing. I'm sure. Well, I can be, especially in the palm court, the afternoon lights all around the rose page. He said, Daddy, please, may I marry? Mary Denny. Yes, Mary Denny. I said, Daddy, please, may we have another year together and move back to Chicago, you and I, and bring a contract and a heart both of which will mend because I'm in love. I'm in love, Daddy, and it's what I want to do. It's what she will do. No, I was gentle. I was appeasing. I said, it's what I want to do. It's what you will do. I promise you it was a moment from Puccini. <laughs> Don't make that hideous noise! I'd like to borrow my room at the plaza? One can be so marvelously alone there. No. What did your father say? You're right about it. He is a wicked man. He refused you. Yes. He's not a wicked man. No. He's a wise and intelligent man. Are you mocking me? No. I think you are. You should listen to your father. I think you are mocking me. I'm not. I see things differently now. You see them the wrong way. Bury the fellow in Chicago. Have a life with him. Publish Denny's book. I... No. I knew you wouldn't. How did you know? The gift of prophecy, remember? Tell me, is it because you want him for yourself? No. People have told me. No, there are people things. People have suggested over these little bars of these things little things that I have People will say things. You dismiss them, of course, but should you? Maybe you shouldn't. And that's the look that will annihilate him for years. Totally. Did you look for me? Did you get my message? I'm so worried. <laughs> Mr. Dennis McCleary, unpublished Irish American author and aspiring hypsomaniac. <laughs> I will tell you, please. John, I'm reading something. You went to the billboard. I got you a message you must have received. Eventually. John, this thing I'm reading, I think you should take a look at it. Later. Get sir. All right, John. I told them to look for a nervous man, probably Casey. It was the billboard that was five about 30 people. Why are you here? What's the matter? I'm afraid everything's over, darling. Oh. Mr. Seabury, we won't be publishing your book. Everything is over. What have you? Why not? <coughs> Daddy, it's, you have to pace. It's, the thing's in crates. You, you said, you, you promised that. Whatever did, really. 
Just imagine I did. You're such an optimist, Teddy. You take what you want to have as what will happen. I'm not publishing your book. I'm sorry. Do you know what this will mean? Yes. Do you know what this will mean to us? I know that if I publish it, this will mean to all of you. know. Yes. You have a vision of sorts. You idiot. Who used language? I know that my life is obviously. I know why you're doing this. This was always in the works, wasn't it? From the second you saw me, from the instant you clapped your eyes on me, you wanted to undo me. Nonsense. Because everything I have is mine, and everything you have is inherited. This, this friendship, this mockery, this. What else can you call it the way you hunted me down, pursued me in college? God knows what you really wanted! It's always the same, isn't it, with you? With all of you, with you rich boys. With your pride, and your hurt, and your charity. Or no less a rage. You woo and weigh and promise, and at the moment when nothing else is possible for us, you abandon. Because there's only one thing that really interests you, and that's making sure that you prevail and we succumb. Well, you've done it, Charlie. It's happened. Congratulations! Daddy, I don't commune. John, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I found something I think you need to see. Well, Seems there's something else that needs my attention. I'll. <coughs> Each of us is certain of what will happen, Teddy. The only difference is I'm right. I don't know if there's anything I can change, but I can refuse to acquiesce. I can do that much. You can stay in the room a while if you like. This book, or whatever of yours, of your study, is a marvelous thing. I only hope that for your sake no one ever publishes it. I only hope that for your sake you die old and obscure. I was walking to meet you because that had been our plan, 
and our bigger plan was in place, and the happiness of that was excruciating. I didn't think I could take another moment of it. I thought a lifetime of this will ruin me. My lungs can't take it, my heart. When I got to the billboard and waited, and it didn't come, I knew something bad had happened. I knew something had gone terribly wrong, and that was a hideous feeling. But tolerable somehow. Somehow I could tolerate that. But still, I, I don't want any kind of aftermath. I don't want anything after this. It is the light. <coughs> Some kind of happiness it's so complete that you don't. Sometimes the world. It's so beautiful that you don't want any more of it. You don't need time and money and getting famous and more time. You want only a gesture. Something so beautiful it matches the world. You, in this light, you love me. It's enough. It would be. Ask me to leave, John. Don't you want me to leave? Yes, good. Please leave. Huh. <coughs> we were going to get drinks into the theater. Did you say that? Yeah. Find a place to have a cocktail. A cocktail for a theater. We should hurry. We want to find a place that we can have with this boat. A drink or two to make the play bearable. John. You shouldn't stare. It's 
not polite to stare. Have you learned something? What have you learned? Don't be silent. That's all you have to do when you win. You have that <coughs> power. And it's not fair. Say something. You lied. What have you got there? You lied to me. Have you found another book? Another question? How long did you do this to me? What have I done? I have no idea. How do you not understand what I'm talking about? I haven't the least idea. You lied. Which lie? Are you white? John. Are you a white woman? Look at me, John. Am I a white woman? I don't know. I can't tell anymore. The light no, is here. No, John. Not a white woman. Were you ever? How could that be? Did you ever live as Yes. A For several years in Paris, yes. I thought it would be a good idea. Well, it's not in your book. I met a man there. He said to me, have you traveled much since you've been here? Have you been to your family's home? Have you been to the home of your ancestors? Baby saw was puzzled. He said, well, you are boss, are you not? Un boss? I said, yes. Not if we just we boss. Oh, I was speaking French, though. But it might be true. It's not in your book. It wasn't me. May I see your arms? No. I've seen them before. Not the way you need to look at them now. I didn't understand before. I, I didn't know what I was looking for. I never Please, understood I anything. Not a single thing. Let me see your arms. That was all very long ago. But you. Ages ago. You said there's no such you thing as time. You need to not the pleasure, but to ease the pain. It's you, done. Let me see your arms. No, it's nothing. It's over. It should have never been discovered. I fought it. I fought it, I fought it, I fought it, and I won. So why should you remember it? Because you die from it! No. Eleven years from now. No. You've been missing for five no. years. No, that's not me. They find us in some crummy little that's apartment you can on upper Broadway. You all fake, you made me! You throw a ring and try to your body starts to decompose. Stop it! And you're trying to needle loose on your arm. Not true! Not true! Not true! Not true! Not true! A dog becomes famous. <laughs> Amongst the varied personages that made Arbiter House such a lively place in its heyday, one was not.
erotic. Wonder if we can find a way of including this fellow in our own little adventures from time to time. This entry was only the beginning for me. Given the imminent demise of print literature, it may be difficult for us to imagine a time in which a book publisher could impose greatly on the main culture, but John Pacey Ring managed this feat. The people who knew him, particularly underlings, felt he contained a mere physical quality of threat. But this diary entry was the first indication that his relationship with Dennis McCleary, which has always been construed along mentor people, even father's son lines, contained an erotic component. Certainly there was no hint of this in Jesse Brewster's memoir, but that book merits special status as a rare example of text that doesn't include even inadvertent truth. As I delved deeper and deeper into the story, evidence grew that the erotic was not merely a strain in the relationship, but perhaps the defining factor. This doesn't happen. I would have understood, John. But if I of all people would have understood. I don't believe this happens. But it's in a book. But it's not me. No! No! Jesse! I can't. It's I not can't. a book coming out this time, John. I can't let it finish the way you say it, It's theater tickets! Goodbye, John. Jesse! It's three seats for tonight's performance. Jesse! In my heart. That was the play you were going to see, isn't it? Ah! What's that? Oh, no. John, this is Bruce Jesse Jones. We're not John, we have to do something. John, we have to do something. I can't move. John. I like both 
books, and, and they both seem authentic to me in their own ways, and that's all I can manage for the yes. Wait, who wrote the other book? Miss Brewster, as it happens. Is that true? No. No? I wrote the book. You wrote the other book. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see about that, won't we? Oh, yes, we'll see. Either way, it's wonderful. Yes, it, it is. It, it is. John, will you lose your shirt? <coughs> Are you sure? Yes, you're a man of vision. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm going to be published. I'm going to be married. I'm so happy. Thank you, John. Thank you for it. I know I can be an idiot and a fool and a brute, but the thing is, I just love the world so much. So much. Yes, I know that about you, Teddy. Well, I don't know about you, but I'd like to get to the theater early for a change. Oh, absolutely. Because 80 years from now, there are going to be signs in the lobby saying, Warning, this play contains cigarette smoking, so we don't have a minute to lose. <laughs> <laughs> we best hurry for one time for cocktails. Oh, let's have cocktails. Let's have cocktails. And then to the theater. Yes, let's, everyone. Give it to you, Gidger. We'll have cocktails, and then we'll go to the theater, and we'll know what's going to happen in the minute the maid enters with the bowl of roses. But we'll enjoy it anyway, won't we? We'll find a way. Hurry now, let's go. I don't want to miss the curtain. 